What's the worst thing that could happen to the weakest position in fantasy football? Injuries. And we had a couple from the tight end position. Let's talk about who we can start and sit for week two. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. Today we're talking about tight ends, the football kind, and, uh, you know, trying to see who we can trust this week. This is one of the thinnest positions in, in fantasy football, and then we go out and lose two top 10 options in the same week. It gets even thinner now, but we got to start somebody. We can't just leave the space blank. So let's get into uh, some, some tight ends that we need to discuss and see who we can trust this week for week two. Uh, after the video, make sure you go check out Rotoballer, hit that subscribe button. Uh, tons of content over there, more in-depth analysis, and the live show on Sunday mornings. You want to make sure you check that out. Uh, also wanted to throw in here real quick, said it on my wide receiver video, but I'm going to say it again. I really try to get to every question and comment. Had over 5,000 last week. And there's going to be times where I just can't get to that many. I really appreciate the support, but I want you guys to continue to help each other out, you know, build the community, uh, be positive, help each other, and, and let's try to, to make a good thing here. Also, I live in North Carolina. In case you haven't uh, noticed yet, there's a little bit of weather headed this way. Now, I'm a little bit inland, but we are expecting heavy winds and rain, and I may get a little slow in the response time here come the weekend. I'm going to do the best that I can. Just want to throw that out there, guys, though, so you, you, you're aware of it, and don't think I'm ignoring you because I'm not. But for now... Let's talk some tight ends. Just like the other videos with this new format, these are in no specific order. It's literally just a list of tight ends, so don't get all bent out of shape if they're not in the order you think they should be. It's literally just a list of names. Now, we're going to start off at the top, Rob Gronkowski. Now, he's got a tough matchup with the, the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, but he just came off a game against the Houston Texans where he had seven catches for 123 and a touchdown. Looked great. He's healthy. No need to sell you on it. You're starting Gronk no matter what. Next up is Travis Kelsey. Now, Kelsey had a total dud in week one. Like, what, one catch for six yards? Thanks, Travis. Uh, but now they're going to be playing on the road in Pittsburgh against a high-powered Steelers offense uh, that they're going to have to throw the ball in Kansas City to stay involved. The issue is Tyreek Hill is like the man there. Like, it's the Tyreek Hill show. And they didn't need Travis Kelsey in the first week, but do they need him in the second? They're going to have to get him going. Uh, if they want to continue this all throughout the season, they can't just go to Tyreek Hill I mean, I guess they could. I mean, he seemed to do everything. But they're going to have to get Travis Kelsey going there in that offense if they want to, you know, play deep into, this, into the season. Travis Kelsey, I think, has a bounce back week this week, and he's a start for me. Zach Ertz is next up on the list for the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going to be on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Last week, Zach Ertz was one of my sits of the week, and everybody thought I was crazy till he went up and posted, what, five catches for 48 yards? And then people realized, yeah, maybe he wasn't that good of a play. This week, though, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm going to start him. Now, Tampa Bay didn't give up a huge gain to the New Orleans tight end. Ben Watson had four catches for 44 yards. But apparently this offense in Tampa Bay is a thing now. And I can see the, the Philadelphia Eagles having to throw the ball more. Now, Nick Foles and, and Zach Ertz don't have what you would call great chemistry. And Zach Ertz had a few uncharacteristic drops last week. Had he caught those, the game line may have been a little different. I look for them to still lean on Zach Ertz this week, especially since there's no Alshon Jeffrey. I'm starting Zach Ertz this week and hoping for a bounce back. Jimmy Graham next up on the list for the Green Bay Packers is going to be playing at home against the Minnesota Vikings. And like all the other Packers that I talked about, this one solely relies on the health of Aaron Rodgers. If Rodgers sits, Graham sits. If Rodgers plays, then Graham plays. Now, yeah, Graham didn't have a great week one. Rodgers didn't look for him very much, but they had a lot more big plays in that game. They need to get in the red zone a little bit more for Jimmy Graham to be dependent, you know, dependable. I talked about it in the preseason. I have to, I have to believe that Jimmy Graham is solely reliant on touchdowns this year. He's not going to go out and catch a bunch of balls. But with the Aaron Rodgers-led offense and the pick that you probably you know spent on taking him, you have to start him. Minnesota did give up a great week to George Kittle, so there's always that possibility. Uh, this one, like I said, relies solely on Aaron Rodgers. Watch the injury report. If he plays, Graham plays. Jonu Smith is next up, and he's the backup now in Tennessee for Delaney Walker. Now, this is bold prediction of this video. I had one in the quarterback video, and we're going to do one in this one. This is a total lottery ticket. If you are looking for a gamble this week, you, you put in Jonu Smith as your tight end. He's going to be starting, like I said, in place of the injured Delaney Walker at home against Houston. Is it the greatest matchup? No, but Houston just got torched by Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, and Jonu Smith is a lot more undervalued than people give him credit for. Nobody knows who he is. He's a big, athletic, pass-catching tight end. Now he is unproven, and that's part of the reason he's underrated. But if you're willing to take a gamble, and you want to take a risk, and you want to swing for the fences... Jonu Smith is your guy. If you want to play it safe, you may want to hit some of these guys lower on the list. 
Evan Ingram next up on the list for the New York Giants can be playing on the road for the Dallas Cowboys and I mentioned it in the wide receiver video I believe I like the actual Giants offense this week I'm looking for big things out of the Giants offense I predicted Eli Manning as a top 10 fantasy quarterback this week which I know is pretty bold but, but I think Evan Ingram has a bounce back after his two receptions for 18 yards listen it was a tough matchup uh, they couldn't get anything going uh, the Dallas defense is not going to be able to contain this offense like the Jacksonville Jaguars did. Uh, I like Evan Ingram this week, and I'm starting him. Kyle Rudolph is next up on the list for the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to be on the road facing the Green Bay Packers, and he's going to be a sit for this week. And for some reason, Cousins didn't look his way very much in week one. He only had one catch for 11 yards. It was a touchdown, so that helped. But has Kyle Rudolph become touchdown dependent? I don't think so. I think they end up getting him going, but until they do... Uh, in a game where Aaron Rodgers may sit and they may not be forced to throw the ball all four quarters, I'm not gambling on Kyle Rudolph, and I'm going to sit him here in Week 2. Trey Burton next on the list for the Chicago Bears. going to be playing at home against the Seattle Seahawks. I have him as a start this week. Uh, I know he had a bad Week 1, one reception for 15 yards, but Chicago realizes that they have to get him going. They have to include him more in the game plan if they want to be successful this year and they want to win games. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity opportunity for them to throw against a weaker Seattle defense. I, I like his upside for the weekend. I'm going to start Trey Burton. Jordan Reed next up on the list. They're going to be at home against the Indianapolis Colts, and he is a start this week. As long as he is healthy, Rule 86 is in effect, and we start Jordan Reed. No need for me to sell you on it. The guy is elite if he can stay healthy. Let's talk about some Jack Mother... Doyle now. He's next up on the list. The Indianapolis Colts are going to be on the road to face the Washington Redskins. Uh, and Jack Doyle had himself a typical Jack Doyle type of day in week one. Seven catches for 60 yards. Lots of involvement, not a lot of yardage. Kind of what we saw last year. A little bit of the same. The problem is, though, is Ebron's still taking the touchdown looks. And that can be problematic the deeper we get into the season. If you're in a PPR league, Jack Doyle can be a start for you this week. Standard leagues, though, unless you have no better options, I'm going to sit Jack Doyle uh, in standard leagues. David Njoku is next for the Cleveland Browns. going to be playing on the road for the New Orleans Saints. And I'm still starting all the Browns this week. They're going to have to put up huge offensive numbers in Cleveland in order to even be in the same zip code as the Saints. And that just leads to more and more passing. David Njoku will be involved. Didn't have a great week one. A lot of that had to blame with the weather, though. I'm starting David Njoku here for week two. George Kittle next up on the list. And George Kittle had a great week. Five catches for 90 yards. He was Jimmy G's top target against a tough defense in Minnesota. Now they're going to be at home against the weak Detroit Lions defense. If you have George Kittle, he's borderline must start this week, especially if Marquise Goodwin is out again. Tyler Eifert of the Cincinnati Bengals is up next. They're going to be playing at home against the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night. Now, typically, I don't like the Thursday night passing games, but this situation, I don't like Tyler Eifert. The dude is literally made of old grade school paper mache. And I'm not talking about like the kids who are in grade school now. I'm talking about the paper mache things from when like I was in grade school. That's how old and brittle he pretty much is. He's just not dependable, and I'm not willing to risk it week in and week out until he can prove multiple weeks of healthiness. I'm passing and sitting on Tyler Eifert. O.J. Howard is next of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are one of the top offenses in football, who not too many people saw coming, are going to be playing at home against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he's too boom or bust for me. He had two catches for 54 yards. He's not something that they look to you know, often, and he's just not reliable. I'm going to sit O.J. Howard again here in week two. Same thing goes for Cameron Brake. He wasn't even looked at by Fitzpatrick, and for that reason alone, he's probably not going to be looked at again here in week two against a tougher Philly uh, defense. I'm going to sit Cameron Brake also. Jared Cook next up on the list. Jared Cook, one of my starts of the week last week, and the dude absolutely went crazy in week one. Uh, we knew he was going to attack the linebackers there, which is the only weakness of the Rams, and he did. He had a great game there in week one, and now he's one of the most popular waiver claims here for week two. He's got a tough, tough matchup, though, on the road in Denver. Now, does he have a great week like he did in week one? Probably not. You guys can't expect that again. But I do like him going forward, and he is a start for me this week against the Denver Broncos. Eric Ebron next on the list for the Indianapolis Colts on the road against the Washington Redskins. And we kind of touched on him when we talked about Jack Mother and Doyle a couple minutes ago. Uh, I'm going to sit Eric Ebron also. This is going to be one of these weeks where whoever gets the touchdown between Doyle and Ebron is going to have the better week. And I'm not willing to you know risk it every week trying to pick the right one. I'm just going to play it safe here. I'm going to sit Ebron. Charles Clay up next of the Buffalo Bills is going to be playing at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. And he plays for Buffalo, which means what? Yep, he's a sit. RSJ, Ricky Seals-Jones, is next up on the list of the Arizona Cardinals. We'll be playing on the road against the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams who just got tore up by Jared Cook. 
The difference is I don't have the same faith in the Arizona offense. Not to say I had it in the Oakland offense, but that Arizona offense, passing offense, looked horrible week one. I'm not willing to risk it uh, with with Ricky Seals-Jones here in week two. There's better options out there, and I'm going to sit him this week. Let's move on to another acronym now. How about ASJ, Austin Safarian Jenkins of the Jacksonville Jaguars, me playing at home against the New England Patriots. I'm going to list him as a start only because I don't know the status of Leonard Fournette yet. If Fournette plays, I'm probably going to sit ASJ. If Fournette is out, they're going to be forced to throw the ball more in Jacksonville in order to stay in the game against New England. And then I would start Austin Safarian Jenkins. It really depends on the health of Leonard Fournette. Let's talk about old man Ben Watson now of the New Orleans Saints going to be at home against the Cleveland Browns. And if you're looking for a safe play in deeper leagues and there's just not a whole lot of tight end options out there, I'm okay starting Ben Watson. He's not going to put up huge numbers. He had four catches for 44 yards last week against Tampa Bay, and I expect New Orleans to throw the ball a lot again this week. They're going to come out firing all cylinders. they got to get this win uh, in New Orleans. They cannot afford to go 0-2. The Browns, on the other hand, just want to win a game because they kind of forgot what it feels like. All right, there's a pretty good list of some tight ends, the football kind, that can hopefully help you guys set your lineups here for week two. I know it's not a very deep position, and I know there's not a whole lot of options, but sometimes you just got to look for that upside and swing for the fences. Hopefully everybody has a good rest of the week out there. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing. I look forward to hearing from you, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.